You come here to learn game. Me teach you. Welcome. So here we have poetry for Neanderthals. Let's dive into contents quickly, though, so we can get into the fun stuff. First, we have the timer, Grok's words of love and sad, rulebook, and word cards. And then we have the almighty inflatable caveman bat. This is used mercilessly if any of your opponents say more than one syllable words, or if they just disagree with you in general. Here we are looking at the official rulebook. You can go verbatim if you wish, but I will go over what you need to do in general to start the game. First, pick teams. Realistically, you want even teams, but it isn't needed. You can sit together as a team, but alternating between players works better for the person swinging the club. Second, pick a team to go first using your preferred method. Rolling dice, rock, paper, scissors, you know, whatever your group likes to do. The other team can pick what side of the cards to use for the game, orange or gray. The object of the game is to try and get your teammate or teammates to guess as many word or phrases as they can in the allotted amount of time. There is one catch, however. You must use one-syllable words, thus the Neanderthal part. Let's look at an example. The Team 1 starting Poet and Team 2 starting Bat Holder should be near or sitting next to each other. Team 2 turns over the Hourglass and Team 1 Poet immediately draws a card and begins the turn. In this example, I draw the word Heart. I might say, Big Red Thing in Chest, Give Life. If my teammate says Heart, I can put the card on the one point column located on the score sheet. If I wanted to go for three points, I would have tried to get my teammate to guess broken first by saying, do not fix, if not, if my teammate guesses broken, I would then say yes, then start with the clue for heart. For people's first time playing the game, I suggest making a house rule just to go for the single point words till everyone is acquainted and talking more Neanderthal-like. Then once that happens, going for the three point words will come easier. We personally made a house rule for some games just to go for three points on each card. That way there was no confusion. Now, if at any point during the poet's turn, he says any two syllable words or breaks any rules, the opposing team club holder can whack, smack, or gently hit that player while saying no. Then the opposing player grabs the card from the poet's hand and puts that card on their team's one point score sheet. The poet must then immediately grab a card and start over. If the poet or teammate cannot guess the word and feels like too much time is being spent, they can opt to skip the word and draw a new card. However, the skipped card must go to the opposing team's one point score sheet. Let's briefly take a look at the rules that would constitute a clubbing. You can't say any word, part of a word, or any form of a word that is on the poetry card. Now, unless someone on your team has already said it out loud, you can't say that word. So if your teammate says, for example, apple, you can say no apple, as apple was already said, even though it is a two-syllable word. You can't use gestures or charades. This is a big one, as I have seen this happen quite a bit. Me eat on this. Eat food on this thing. Yeah, none of that. You can't use sounds like or rhymes with. For example, with the word heart, you can't say rhymes with tart. You can't use initials or abbreviations. Again, for heart, you can't say, for example, EKG. Lastly, you can't use other languages. Stick with the native language you are using. The poet needs to get through as many cards as possible till the hourglass runs out of sand. 
which at that point, the turn is over and the team swap rolls. Discussions can happen at this point to whether the poet was clubbed unnecessarily or if there are any disputes on who gets the points for a card. More on that in a bit. The rolls rotate between players till everyone has been a poet a desired amount of times. The generic number is three, but the group can decide on that as they wish. The teams with the highest total score between one and three point cards is the winner. At the end of the game, you can pull out Grok's words of love and sad for further entertainment if you choose to do so. The winning team chooses their top three cards and fits them into the poem ad lib style using one or three point words for each slot. The losing team has the club and can decide if the poem is good enough not to receive punishment. This is all purely extra to the game, of course, and it's just for fun. As a group, you may want to change some things to make it more fun or challenging if you want, which leads me to the last section. Having played Poetry for Neanderthal several times now, I do have some final suggestions that could be of help or enhance the game outside what is listed in the rulebook. The first being a family feud style ending of each round. What I mean by that is, instead of giving the card immediately to the other team for one point, you lay the card face down outside the score sheet till the end of the round. At that point, the opposing team can have a chance to guess the word or phrase the poet's team was going for. If they guess correctly, they get three points instead of one. The other suggestion is if at any point you think the club user is wrong in clubbing you, or there is a dispute on a card, instead of placing the timer on its side, just set the card next to the scorecard till the end of the turn. You only have so much time to get your teammate to guess words, so disputes can really break the flow of concentration for the poet. So that's Poetry for Neanderthals. A fun game that can be enjoyed by two or preferably more players. With that being said, it's your turn.